Okay, welcome to the second video um, introducing Descartes um, and helping us with our transition from um, the ancient period uh, to the modern one with the scientific revolution. In this video, I want to introduce the, the three key features of the new scientific worldview. So um, we'll just read these and then, and then we'll talk about them. So the first feature is that um, the new scientific worldview is mathematical. So everything in nature can be described mathematic mathematically. So Galileo famously said that the book of nature is written in the language of mathematics. The book of nature is written in the language. Um, and this was a really revolutionary thought that you could really understand everything that there was to understand in a legitimate science um, through mathematics. Um, the second feature of the new scientific worldview was that uh, nature was unified, that its laws could be applied everywhere in the universe, that there, there was no division between different spheres, rather the same laws apply equally everywhere. And the third feature was that it was mechanistic, that nature works like a machine, like a clock. So um, let, me, let me dig into these claims a bit. Um, so last time nature works like a machine, like a clock, um, and contrast them with um, the Aristotelian view, with the Aristotelian view. Um, so mathematics was deployed in the old physics, right? I mean, Remember, um, the Ptolemaic astronomers could predict using sophisticated mathematics where the heavenly bodies would be in the sky on any given night, right? I mean, it takes a lot of sophisticated mathematics to predict elliptical motions, right? That's, that's, this is not a simple equation. Um, nonetheless, um, they thought it was equally important um, to take into account qualitative relationships. Right? The Aristotelian physicists thought qualitative relations were equally important to quantitative ones or mathematical ones. Um, and in particular, they thought that um, analogies between the human microcosmos and the universe as a whole were, were especially important. Um, and so there's a way in which um, they put humans at the center of it all and saw the universe as ordered um, in a way around our lives, right? Um, in ways that would be um, conducive to our well being. And um, Aristotelian scholastic physics maintained that there were four basic elements, earth, air, fire, and water, and each element had its natural place. And the motion of bodies primarily composed of one element would move toward the natural place, but the natures of these basic elements were understood qualitatively um, in that each had different essential features. And these were not a matter of their mathematical properties, right? So, um, so they're not, they're, the qualitative and the quantitative were equally important. Whereas down here, it's just the quantitative. That's significant. They jettison the, the qualitative. So, the hotness of fire or the wetness of water um, isn't really thought to be essential to motion on this new scientific worldview. Okay, so that's what I wanted to say about um, the mathematical nature of this worldview and how it really looks at quantitative relationships um, while getting rid of qualitative relationships. Um, the second thing I wanna talk about is the fact that it's unified. So the new science also demanded uniformity. 
that its mathematical laws can be applied everywhere in the universe. It maintained that the same laws of motion govern both bodies on Earth and in the heavens. And remember, this contrasted with the scholastic Aristotelian Ptolemaic model, according to which there's a heavenly sphere that contains all of the planets and all of the other celestial bodies, and that's situated above the terrestrial sphere here on Earth, and the celestial and the terrestrial spheres are governed by different laws, right? You don't, you don't find the four elements, uh, earth, air, fire, and water, up in the heavenly sphere. Rather, the heavenly bodies um, are sort of their own sui generis thing with, its, with their own laws. And so there's, there's a break between um, things down here on Earth um, so right, there's things here on Earth, and then there's everything up here out in the sky, right? Um, that's the that's the celestial sphere, right? So, so motion works one way down here, but it works a completely different way up in the celestial sphere. Whereas down here, there's no distinction. The same laws govern everything, right? Govern all of nature in all of its parts. And so nature is unified, um, and the laws governing nature are the same everywhere, all over the universe. Nature is uniform. And so that's the second huge break uh, of, the, of the new modern way of thinking, the new scientific worldview. Um, and the third, the third break is, um, is that the new... The, new, the proponents of the new science um, took nature to be mechanistic or mechanical, right? They viewed the universe as a complex machine, like a clock. But think about a clock. In a clock, you can understand how one part works if you understand how it interacts with all the other parts, right? If you understand what it's pushing or pulling in one part, then through a careful examination, you can understand how it's pushing or pulling the next part and so on for all of the different parts, right? They're kind of all pushing and pulling on one another, interacting with one another um, physically um, by bumping into one another. Um, and, and on this view, um, all, the whole universe is like that, right? So on this view, instead of everything moving towards a natural place, right, having its natural telos, rather, um, the movements of everything are determined by the movements of other things around them that are bumping into them, right? So that goes along with this idea of inertia, right? It's through things bumping into other things, right? Crack. That things end up in motion or out of motion, right? Um, and so the third feature of the new, of the new scientific worldview um, is that it rejects that um, things have a natural place. It rejects that um, there are these elements, earth, air, fire, and water, that are always trying to go to that natural place, that have a natural resting point, that have an end or a purpose where they want to be, where they're moving themselves. No, things don't have a natural place. All there is is inertia. All there is is different things bumping into one another and moving one another by pushing and pulling each other around, but nothing's trying to get to its natural final resting place. Rather, things are just bumping into one another, right? Like, like the parts of a clock, like the gears in a clock. And so that's the third feature of the new scientific worldview. In the next video, I'll introduce Descartes' project.